Hey, 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 we just got the levels right. <laughs> what was going on there? Ah. Are you, what program do we use nowadays? Because we used to just use a fade on the board op. Yep, we're, uh, we're on that Ableton. Ableton? Forget, forgot I saved it after I faded it, so didn't bring the fader back up from the saver. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's all right. That's Not all right. something I'm checking. We're figuring it out as we go, as we do every week, which means it's time for another episode of FM Rager. Hey, everyone, I'm your host, Connor Clifton, joined, as always, by my lovely co-host, Ned Gale. Ned, how the heck are you? Doing great. Uh, embracing the, uh, the hair today. Not going to be wearing a hat today because, as we all know, wait, shoot, I didn't get the this ready uh because as we all know it is fuck <laughs> a long hair summer and it's blowing in the breeze i didn't get the memo that we were going hatless so i'll join you um my memo is, was i wasn't wearing a hat <laughs> <laughs> this is how long my hair is now. wait do it one more time a long hair summer Do you? I don't think so. No, no. My hair's just flat because I was wearing a hat all day. It's that bleach uh, circle of hair you have up there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) When we bleach the tops of our heads. (laughs) Yeah, when we were playing Franciscan Monks over the weekend. Uh, Very fun game to play. Hey, speaking of uh, over the weekend, how was your freaking weeking? How's your freaking week been? How is my freaking week been? Yep. Uh, Well, as we assessed right before the show... We were kind of busy with freelance stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we, so, uh, we've been we've been busy working boys. Yeah, uh, grinding so, over a hot computer. For the sake of not violating any in, any NDAs, I'll just tell y'all what we've been what media we've been consuming. <laughs> uh, we got a new video game called Vermintide Two. Vermintide Two. It's a set in a Warhammer uh, universe, not Warhammer 40k, which was disgusting. Um, <laughs> disgusting that they didn't go in Warhammer 40k. Oh, I was like, damn, you got some some problems with the space Eldar, the no, Dark Eldar, Eldar, the Dark Eldar, <laughs> and the Tau. Yeah. Um, I, I knew a bit. Uh, no, I'm I'm much more of a fan of the 40k stuff. I like seeing what the Catholic Church becomes in the future with like evil space posts, the space marines with yeah. the, the crazy like uh, man. I need what to find all church? my models. I got some some of them somewhere. The church is called like the Triumvirate or something like that. And I wanted the pieces of the Warhammer game, but I didn't want to play the game. Yeah, yeah. I would rather play a video game. I just thought they looked cool and were cool toys. They, yeah, they're really fun to paint, you know, and build them out. There was a guy, someone, someone I've known in the last two years. And if you're in the chat, please uh, sound off in the chat. But someone I knew, that was like their second source of income. Oh, was oh, just painting even... models for people like outside of the... Uh, playing the game what's up oh don't even uh mention that's the raised by wolves vibe and she's right space crusaders space church worshiping some crazy spirit my big critique of the raised by wolves religion is that it means christianity doesn't win which is a sacrilege (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, (laughs) uh, we'll be playing vermintide on our twitch stream hopefully soon we uh managed to convince all of your favorite guests. <laughs> Some of your favorite friends of the show. And hey, if you're playing it on PlayStation, it's only 10 bucks right now. Come play it with me. It's like Left 4 Dead, but um, rats. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very... Uh, it's on my account, uh, Boys Team 12. Back when um, me and my college friends all shouted out Boys Team and we're graduating <laughs> in the year of 2012. So that explains why I have that silly name. But it, it, is, it does say Boys Team. <laughs> it boys does, Team. It does say Boys Team... It's it's more boys team than boys team because I don't have an apostrophe in it. it it's like when we bought those uh, flamingo hats that we were so jazzed on, and then we posted a picture of all three of us, you be and Billy, wearing them, and we're like, "Look at us, flamingo guys!" But if you just read it back, it says "flaming guys," <laughs> which is there's nothing wrong with that. We just no, had, it's just like we just oh, had, oops. <laughs> yeah, we just had egg on our face, and you know, and there's nothing wrong with the steaming boy. Right, I, I, I want to make Wait. that clear as well. <laughs> Uh, a flaming guy, a steaming boy, however you want them cooked, <laughs> it's, it's all right by me. Yeah, however angry they are. A grilled guy. You now, know? now, shows that we've been watching, uh, we started watching Succession, no spoilers, 
And then we started watching, rewatching Dexter's Lab, which holds the hell up. Bring the spoilers. Tell me your favorite episodes. Yeah. Uh, that, that came because we were watching, um, the reason we started watching Dexter was because we watched that pilot uh, what was that 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 uh, of the nerdy guys fighting over the Boba Fett action oh, figure? Uh, Evan Dorkin's Welcome to Eltingville. Yeah, uh, which was great. We had a great time. And you mentioned that. Uh, yeah, well, they, well, they they mentioned that they're fighting over this Boba Fett action figure, and uh, someone mentioned it being NRFB, and I got really excited because I had never heard it outside of that Dexter's Lab episode where they uh, go to the convention. They're they're going to a Star Trek convention, end up at a Barbie convention, and they have to fight one of the clerks because they open an NRFB box, which is never removed from box. NRFB. <laughs> NRFB. NRFB. Uh, oh, don't even mention the Omelette du Fromage episode, mm. which is also good. Um, yeah, anything that features Dexter's dad, I think uh, he's just... There's, there's certain car- cartoon characters whose voice acting alone makes him like Moltar, any Space Ghost character yeah, really. Yeah. I, most Dexter characters, to be honest, like I haven't seen Dexter's Lab in so long that even just Dexter's voice is like so freaking funny to me now. Yeah, it's good. I I'll, oh and then we watched the uh the space the Speed Racer parody. The episode. Speed Racer one. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Uh, the very, very uh, Professor fan. Hawk one. I've had that song stuck in my head all freaking week. Oh wait, there is one thing that we did. Oh yeah what you got um, yeah. Rest in peace to Deep End Records, everybody. They have officially yeah. shut their doors, and over the weekend, they had a uh, 50% off sale, and I want to show you guys our haul. Let's see that haul! <laughs> We're going to do this every time we go to buy records, I think. <laughs> we need more haul showing off. Oh, oh, don't even say, don't forget Brack. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. You can't. We, you can never. Nah, I just decided to lump in all the Space Ghost characters instead of waste time and listing off each and every single one of Bra- my favorites. Brack's from that one show, uh, The Brack Show, presenting Brack starring Brack, right? Brack presents The Brack Show ah. starring Brack. Oh, oh, so he's only the producer. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, fr- first thing on the top of this stack uh, of the stacks. <laughs> right, guys? We're call a different podcast. Uh, <laughs> what podcast is that? <laughs> yeah, here, Weather Report. I think this is one of their final albums for Jaco Pastorius Dies. Solid uh, jazz fusion uh, cuts. It's good. Now, this is uh, some of my personal favorite. One of the things I saw that I just had to get, which is Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass going places. I got another Herb Alpert somewhere in there. Let me pull it up. That one has Zorba Greek and Spanish Flea on it, which is good. Which, if you've ever come to a live F and Rager show, that's pretty much all you're hearing the whole time you're there. Yeah, we just play Herb Alpert. Ooh, oh gosh, <laughs> can we show this? <laughs> yeah, uh, very excited to have whipped cream and other delights. My dad told me he used to, uh, uh, he just bought this album just for the, the visuals. <laughs> Um, Liked the visual element. Uh, Connor did go back to buy this. He had already checked out. And then he saw that and he went, oh, oh, and then he kissed it a few times. And then (laughs) I kissed the price tag, just to be clear. Yeah. I'm not uh, a pervert. I really liked this one. This is a good pull from you, Connor. Oh, yeah. Kentucky Country Music, uh, 1927 and 1937. Some very problematic song titles. Absolutely, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, not going to read them. <laughs> but some wonderful uh, banjo playing and a high vocal pulse. What All right. What else we got? Uh, let's bust out that National Lampoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this one a lot. Can you read the back of this one? Yeah. It's, uh... So this is the National Lampoon Missing White House tapes. It's supposed to just totally eviscerate Richard Milhouse Nixon. From what I understand, they lampoon him. Nationally. <laughs> All right. So on the back is a, a fake memo. Um, says from Colson to Hagen staff for your eyes only. Add the persons responsible for the enclosed recording to the official enemies list. Side B: David Axelrod, Henry Beard, John Belushi, Chris Surf, Dave Chevy Chase, Jim Shack. Gary Goodrow, Hugo Flesh, Tony Hendra, Tom Humor, Hummer, Sean Kelly, Rhonda Coulee, Alice Platon, Tony Shuren, Jim Strauss, Harry Armack, have the IRS take a look at Electric Lady Studios and Bell Sound Studios, New York. <laughs> Side A, Pat Buchanan, Checkers, Sam Dash, John Dean, Jerry Ford, Sam Irvin, John Mitchell, Richard Nixon, Bebe Rebozo, Dal Zanofsky, him I've heard of, Ron Ziegler, what about the licenses, Granted Underdog Studio, LA Engineer Mark Lennett, Tape Doctors Vic Dinnerstein, and Irving Kirsch. 
The plumber's unit had photos of the most national lampoon editors and some pretty compromising positions. Beard, Hendra, and Kelly could be zapped, Howie says. Let's smash those goddamn dirty little commie creeps once and for all. A million dollars doesn't seem too much, says the Oval Office. Get back to me about this, Gemstone. P.S. I love you. Call M's lawyer. Urgent. I didn't take the tapes home. I didn't play them. Don't believe what I didn't hear. Hmm. Hmm. I hope it holds up. Yeah, we, that one we have not, yeah, not cracked into yet. Yeah, we're going to take a listen to that one. Um, All right, we still got more from this poll. Guys, this is a 50% off sale. Yeah, we, we could not uh, go ham. Oh, yeah, got a Buddy Rich album. Some Buddy Rich, pretty exciting album cover. With uh, who, who was the vibraphone player on that one? Uh, Lionel? That's Lionel Hampton. Yeah. Yeah, I am a... What's your, what's your favorite instrument? Connor, because mine is by far the vibraphone. I love the way it sounds. I love the way it's used. I love playing the xylophone. I really love getting it all out on the drums, but my favorite instrument to hear is a sexy, dirty saxophone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I hear a saxophone yeah. in a rock song, I get pretty stoked. Unless it's like the Zootons, where they're like, our whole thing is we got a sax guy. <laughs> I'm like, I don't give a shit. Man, I, well, I'm a freak for Ferris Sanders. That guy can fucking yeah. turn a sax inside out, baby. Uh, French Prog Masters Gong. This is right after their Master Builder album. I've never heard this album in my life. But I assume they use the harmonic minor scale and make it their uh, their plaything. <laughs> tilt it down. The light oh, yeah, yeah, getting it a little, bad. little glare on the gong, there. gong. All right. And then yeah. uh, Connor. <laughs> so <laughs> Connor and I have been having a uh, prog rock, rock Sunday. Yeah, pro, I was gonna say progressive Sundays. I was like, mm, I don't, there's nothing progressive about sitting in the couch and listening to a record really loud. Yeah. Prog rock Sundays, uh, where we just listen to different prog rock records that we've collected over time. Uh, I've gotten many from a uh, friend of the show, Nick's record collection. And uh, Connor continued the search this week at Deep End. You one. just look at that bad boy and yeah. tell me that's not a fucking prog rock album. The geese and the ghost. Can you, can you zoom in on that corner? Uh, that guy right there. Yeah. I think that's the most important. No, no, other court. Other court. Ah, it's so hard to see. There's a little man riding a snail and then there's an armored goose Yes, this is prog metal. This is prog. Uh, not to say that this isn't prog. Oh shit! Oh, Phil oh, Collins oh. sang on this one. I thought I recognized the singing voice on it. <laughs> I mean, we'll get to that. Well, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. So the other one that Connor grabbed is a uh, much spookier looking one. Yeah, that's freaky deaky. Yeah, and that's by uh, Steve Hackett. And on the way home, I had to look up both of these uh, artists and be like, okay, well, if, it, if it's a prog album that looks like this and it's pro by one person, it's got to be a solo album. Who did these guys run with? Well, it turns out both of these records that Connor grabbed on other sides of the record store, both members of Genesis. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. We're getting roasted in the chat. This is the most white boy I've seen, y'all. <laughs> prog rock? <laughs> yeah, man, prog rock's pretty white, I guess. Yeah. I don't know the history of it like you do. <laughs> all right i think that uh sorry i'm checking the timer we're cooking a lasagna um, yeah the the weather got cold and you know what that means <laughs> oven lasagna baby <laughs> yeah some people uh, weather gets cold it's immediate sweater it's me it's immediate lasagna <laughs> let's get this going stofers or bust jack i know you were wondering <laughs> I immediately put on this flannel the second it was cold, and I'm like, I'm just hot. Our oven makes this whole house burning hot, but I'm going to live it. Dang. Because I love it. Oh, don't even made a skill at lasagna last night. Why don't you got first off, what does everyone do on the first day of fall? What do you do whenever it starts to get a little cold? And oh, don't even, why don't you tell me a little bit more about that skill at lasagna? We're going to bring your guest on, and in the meantime, we've got a video yeah, the uh, spooky season is uh, just around the corner. As we said, the weather just got a little bit cool, and I think we're all falling for that fall weather. And who falls harder than whoever's closest to the floor? Guys, I'm talking about the dogs. This is a little video called Halloween Party. What is Peter up to? He is trying to scare Shep with his cat mask. And Shep doesn't like to be teased. 
I'm sure Peter wouldn't like someone to tease him. Father has a pump out and is working on the face. Shep wants to know what this is all about. And in goes his nose. Hey, get away from here, says Father. A very sad, sorry, spooky-looking jack-o'-lantern. Sad. Sorry. Spooky. Sorry. Sad. Spooky. Sad. Sorry. Sad. Sorry. Sad. Now comes the best part. And Shep does not like the jack-o'-lantern with a lighted candle in it. Lights on. Everybody laughs at Shep. Tomorrow is Halloween. But there is Peter's cat. Peter Shep with that. And so Shep tears the scary mask apart. There's the outside door. Peter sees his mask, or what is left of it. Mother tells Peter that she has an idea. Everyone blows up a balloon. And then... Shep is happy that he helped Peter win. Peter is very happy. Yes, Halloween is fun. Oh, dang it. You got that still set up? Yeah, the long hair summer thing was still going. My bad. Uh, <laughs> no, that's cool. I like it. Hey, everyone, we're back. What a funny video. <laughs> Halloween sure is fun. Uh, your guest tonight, boy, howdy, are we excited. I believe this is the first time they've been on the sh radio show, Twitch show, whatever we are now. Uh, but you may have seen her at our live show before. And if you've ever gone to Zine Fest Houston, you've definitely seen her. Uh, our guest tonight is a wonderful collagist, collage maker, and Ooh, organizer of Zine Fest Houston. Please welcome to the show, Stacey Collages. Hey! Thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm so glad that y'all asked me. I always get excited. Um, it's This is kind of less nerve-wracking than seeing a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you want, we can have everyone zoom in so you can see everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that's fine. <laughs> no. <laughs> so let me ask you uh, what I asked Ned. How your freaking week been? Um, it's been really good it went by kind of fast i was baking 150 cookies over the weekend for um a virtual bake sale for bakers against racism and this was the bake the vote edition so um all the funds went to black voters matter which is the benefit of uh, the organization that i chose so yeah uh, people were picking up cookies i was dropping off cookies cookies were just like happening everywhere <laughs> cookies everywhere yeah <laughs> Yeah, are, cookies. <laughs> are those cookies for sale or are they already snatched up? Well, I actually, I do have some. I have the chocolate chip, uh, chopped chocolate, and then the honey roasted peanut butter left. So if you want some cookies. Do you mind? This is unrelated. Can Connor and I have a quick huddle? Yeah. yeah okay, right, one cool. second. Sidebar. Get some of those fucking peanut butter cookies. <laughs> I want to try. Well, I, I'm not really into peanuts, but I'm very curious what that honey roasted peanut on this kind of thing tastes like. All right, uh, yeah, I'm hear we're, we'll, <laughs> we have something to ask you off the air later. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. Also unrelated to that huddle. <laughs> All right, I'm Re real quick. Uh, oh 
Can we talk about your light? I'm real bummed about this party. Oh, yeah. Because when you I, showed it to us. Well, you could see in the yeah. bottom left of your screen a blue you know, emanating glow. This, it, yeah, this glow. Um, this light. I'm sorry, Kate, if you're watching, it doesn't spin anymore. And I don't know what happened. I didn't mean to out you on this. <laughs> It was supposed to spin, but um, it's not spinning. So it's you know, dual I disco like, balls. That's so like, insane. Yeah. Levels of party. I go, yeah. I got the light. I got my drink. I got my makeup on. So like, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that your normal rager checklist? Light, makeup, drink. Yes. That's pretty yeah, good. Much lighting. I don't know I what else I need. Um, well, nowadays hand sanitizer. Sure. And yeah. But partying outside with a mask, so don't. <laughs> yeah. what, are you, what are you drinking tonight? Um, I am drinking a margarita. Ooh. All right. I've got the questions up. <laughs> it took me a while to get this all set up. All right, Stacy, let's get right into the meat of what this show's about. Partying. <laughs> Do you remember your first party? Uh, yes. Vaguely, I think it was uh, one of my cousin's birthdays at Discovery Zone. I just imagine, remember like, running through these like columns or, you know, pe- the ball pit, I think was part of it. Just like a mashup of like all the Discovery Zone parties. <laughs> I, my biggest memory of Discovery Zone is just the feeling of my back hitting the top of a tube. <laughs> just like, did you ever get oh that? My. Just like kind of yeah. a back rash. <laughs> yeah. My only big memory is static. So much static. <laughs> just getting shocked every which way. Um, but I loved it. I felt like Chuck E. Cheese was for losers and Discovery Zone was for cool kids. <laughs> yes, for sure. You know, I wouldn't be caught. <laughs> Heck no. <laughs> now, we just asked, or you just mentioned that, uh, you know, a checklist for a party is, you know, your face mask. So maybe we can ask this question in two different ways, but I want to know what is your ideal party? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Well, I, so it depends on my mood. I don't mind like a chill dinner party with friends. Or I really like going to like one of those classic rager house parties where there's just like shenanigans going everywhere. You can like talk to other people and they think you're weird. And it's just like chaos, just like absolute chaos. I just, yeah, that's really fun sometimes. Now, I've seen you at a few house parties that we have thrown or attended. Uh, you're fun to party with, but I want to go back to the dinner party because I've never gone to a dinner party with you. What's the dish you're bringing to blow Ooh. everyone's socks off? Ooh, um, well, during the holidays, I usually make this cashew mix with like uh, rosemary and cayenne pepper and brown sugar, Ooh. and so that's that's a hit. Like they're usually gone within like. Did you see my sock? <laughs> what is? That? It shot right off. <laughs> Keep going. This sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's a big hit. Um, any kind of dessert, really, um, I think is usually good. It's like usually my go-to. Okay, that's pretty good. All right. What do you want to see happen at the first post-quarantine party? Ooh. Um. So, <laughs> I would want someone to rent out like a convention center and just like put all the different kinds of parties in each room that we've been missing out on. Like we, you got your quinceañeras, your like birthday parties, your pizza parties, dance parties, um, anything else, like whatever party you missed out on, like you're going to get at this convention. That's a good, I good love answer. this idea. <laughs> this is the this best is... answer we've had so far. Just like just you can like, get yeah, all of it. Yeah. Like, go all out. Like, why not? Like, we've been inside for a long time and just, like, haven't party. <laughs> we need um, one of those, like, uh, is it Havel and Rusk who do all the houses, the historic? Some, somebody to just pick our house up and put it in, <laughs> make it a party exhibit. And they can just yeah. use it for the house party section. You know what I mean? That'd be pretty nice. They could drill a bunch of holes in it. <laughs> no one could come in my room. <laughs> Same as, rules as, as any house rules, party yeah. that we have. Yeah. No one's allowed in my room. Uh... Man, that sounds, I really like that idea a yeah. lot. 
It makes me think there's an episode of Undeclared where there's a massive party in the dorms and each floor is a different theme. Uh, and just like there's like the, the stoner parties, the makeout parties, they're just like you just want to dance. And it was really it was a funny episode because, you know, you got to see all your favorite college stereotypes, of course. But uh, conceptually, yeah, that should be like the new block party. Just rent out the, the Magic Palace or something. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the other. Someone said uh, Ned and Connor's parents are out of town in there, and I'm. <laughs> I feel like one of the parties in the convention is like the cops might come, and we will get in trouble. <laughs> I know, yeah, just to like have that sense of danger. I want, yeah, this, I want like, that edge. <laughs> Let's make it make that your um, your dorm party and the RA. <laughs> yeah. and you got so you you have like a decibel level that you got to keep it at in case the RA comes along. <laughs> This party is going to have a budget of eight million dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the most expensive party ever. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Just everything coming together, picking and choosing what party to make one big party, like a collage. Stacy, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? what attracted you to the art form of collaging? And for those that don't know, can you give us a little primer? <laughs> Yeah, um, so collaging is pretty much just taking whatever you want and then putting it on like a flat surface. Kind of like, I mean, it's kind of a, like a zine in a way. I mean, there's really no rules to collaging. You, um, It's usually done like with paper though. And um, But one of my first experiences with collages was when I went to a trip to the Manil when I was younger and I saw the work of the artist and experimental filmmaker Joseph Cornell and he usually makes these wooden boxes with like glass panels on them so that he can put like found objects and um, just like collage in the background um, and I thought that was like so like whimsical and uh, just like something I'd never seen before and so from that I kind of started decorating my journals and each one had like a theme and everything um so yeah i, I got into it through do, art do you mind uh, if i show off some collages from your uh, instagram real quick i'm just gonna pull them up oh on yeah the no yeah you can go ahead <laughs> here I'll, I'll share with you so you can see what's uh what's going on and while we're looking at them i want to ask when for your um man i am losing the word here but uh your style whenever you're sitting down to make a collage, what elements do you like to bring to uh, the final piece? Yeah, um, so I really like to bring in a little bit of humor and um, mi I'm very big on minimalism. I like, I think less is usually better and more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's just like not that many elements. That, I love um, that one. <laughs> I really like that one. <laughs> Ice cream legs. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Or, um, and I'll use all sorts of things like uh, product packaging, found photographs, um, thread. Um, that's one that I did for a, a mail art auction recently through F Magazine. Ooh. And I'll just, yeah, I'll just kind of use whatever, experiment with different things. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. Oh, <laughs> this one was hanging out uh, at Insomnia for a while, wasn't it? Yes, it yeah. was. Right on. Yeah, and so, oh, well. Someone bought that gold one. Someone bought that one. I know. I tried to buy it at that show, and it was already well, sold. I don't know I who like, bought it. <laughs> like, if for the mystery buyer, like, let me know, because I don't know who bought it. You're going you're gonna to come to a, uh, a raging house party one day, and it's going to be the first thing you see when you walk in, and it's going to be a good omen that this party is a good party. Like, yeah. <laughs> you see a collage? If she sees her own collage in the house you walk into... Oh. Like I, I uh, when I first moved downtown, I sold a painting to people I didn't know, and like three and a half years later, one day someone sends a picture from inside their friend's house, and like, is this you? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen that in so long. <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah, you're like, oh, that's where it ended up. Like, yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> it has a home. I can't relate. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, Connor. No, I mean, I've, I've the most I've had is like. Someone was mean to me at a bar and then later text me after they talked and I was like, hey, wait, I have a comic of yours. You're cool. <laughs> oh I'm like, God. fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Now, uh, when we introduced you up top, we talked about how you're an organizer for Zine Fest Houston. We've had um, some of the other. Wait, hang on. Somebody's mentioning something in the chat. Wait, how many times has that happened? OMFAO. I don't. I, that's up to y'all. How many times have you gone to some place's house and they've seen your stuff? Oh, oh like once or twice. Or <laughs> oh, for Ned. For both of y'all. I don't know. Oh, um. I don't know, maybe like once or twice. Once or twice? Yeah. <laughs> once, once or twice. Once or me. twice. I'll get, I'll get uh, stickers out in public every once in a while for people. I also get sent a lot of art that isn't mine. And like, is this you? It's like, it's, it's not all me <laughs> if it's a weird monster. <laughs> this was in a real snitty place at a bar. Is this you? <laughs> yeah. Someone did this on a toilet. Was it you? Are you dumb enough? <laughs> Which, yes, I am. <laughs> um, like, you did the Wiley Tacos thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're Wiley, right? <laughs> you have markers. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, I remembered my question here. You're one of the Zine Fest Houston organizers. We've had some of the other organizers on the show before. And mm -hmm. uh, for those at home who don't know, this is the first year that Zine Fest Houston is going to be fully digital. Um, you guys are taking on something that industries around the world are trying to take on. Um, Ned and I are very excited to be able to be working with y'all throughout all this. And my question for you is what's been the biggest challenge that you faced as an organizer in pivoting to this new digital environment? Uh, one of the biggest challenges I would say is incorporating the vendors. Like, you know, I mean, at the physical event, it's so easy because they're there themselves and they can sell their own stuff. But uh, this time I feel like it's more on us. And I mean, I feel like it's our duty as organizers um, to the community to provide an outlet for the vendors to make money. And I think the way that we've uh, thought of a solution is will work. Um, and I think like um, we're doing something that's like outside the box and kind of like pushing the limits to what a zine festival can be. And what we're doing is we're doing six hours of programming streaming on Twitch. Hell yeah. <laughs> Start yeah. an account today. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, so we'll have like a bunch of things. We'll have like vin the vendor submitted commercials is how we're going to incorporate the vendors, and um, we'll do a lottery for those commercials. And so, registration ends for that on Sunday, October fourth, and you should register for it, so you have a chance to submit a commercial. And where can we and go to register? You can go to our website at uh, org, and the form for registration and for the Shane Patrick Boyle Memorial Grant for Emerging Zinesters is also on there too. So Zine there's more information on our website about registration and the grant. Pulling that website up right now. Ooh, it's got a pretty layout. I know, it's so pretty. All right, I got zinefesthouston.org. On and then hit up submit. Great, hell yeah, man! I can't wait. I love Zine Fest so dang much, and I'm just like, to I know you guys, I know y'all, I, I know y'all ladies, and I know the work that y'all have been doing on this festival for years now. And there's no one I trust more to carry this thing into the digital age. And I, one of the things you mentioned uh, in your answer, uh, you said the word community, which I think is just like you, the fact that you're trying to put on this digital event period is showing everyone that, hey, hey, physically we're not all hanging out, but there's still a community here. We're still checking in. We're still interested in your artwork. Um, and I just, I'm just blown away. I'm so happy that y'all are doing this. Yeah, for real. I, <laughs> I can't tell you how like bummed I am years that I have to miss scene fest. It, Fun fact, Connor and I probably wouldn't have reconnected uh, after meeting each other like 10 years ago if it wasn't for Zine Fest. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's Make great. Connections. I've had so many memories of Zine Fest just like showing up early, helping y'all out. And it's just like the best part about Zine Fest is being that like 
the earlier you get there and the later you leave because you're just hanging out. You're kind of delirious because you've just been working all day. And it's like, let's go get fucked up. Yeah, you've sold plenty of zines, yet you're in the negative because you bought a bunch of zines. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, like I, all I've done is trade and I haven't stimulated the zine economy. <laughs> <laughs> and and plenty of memories from Zine Fest, Fest and very few memories from the after party. Am I right? <laughs> I love the Zine Fest after parties. They're yeah. always great. <laughs> what are, are y'all? Oh, I'm sorry. I felt like I was interrupting you. Oh, no. I was going to say, like, well, funny that you mentioned an after party because we're still doing one. What yeah. is that going to be like? Well, I think we're going to do like a Zoom uh, digital dance party type thing. So, you know, you can stay at home, um, do whatever you want to do, and then you'll still be at home. So it's like... Oh Have God. you considered calling this event Zoom Fest Houston? Oh. <laughs> no, then they would have to sponsor us. Oh, yeah, that's right. Never mind. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, my final question that I sent to you, Stacey, this is my favorite question I've been asking everybody. Uh, throughout all of quarantine, which is, do you have any new hobbies or obsessions that you picked up since quarantine has started? Yes. So I have started playing Dungeons and Dragons. Sick. <laughs> nerd. <laughs> I know. Kidding. I was like, if I wasn't a nerd already, like, let me just up my <laughs> status and become like zines and like Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> What's your character? So my character is a. Hungarian noblewoman from the 16th century who was a prolific serial killer and she it's she's like an actual person um, Countess Elizabeth Bethory who was claimed to have uh, bathed in the blood of virgins that she killed <laughs> Uh -huh. um, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any black metal uh, drops or I'd be playing one right now so I'm just going to play this again <laughs> Um, yes, we're do we're doing a gothic horror campaign, and it's been very fun. <laughs> it's she looks. I'm pulling up pictures of right now. Her, yeah, right now. she is stone cold, man. May I ask who your DM is? Yes, um, it is James Beard, uh, half of Mystic Multiples, okay. um, a print shop here in Houston. Man, that's great. The last time I DM'd, uh, I had everyone break into a frat house. <laughs> 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 like, there was a goblin frat they had to ruin. So that's just what my kind of games are like. It was <laughs> yeah, that, that was we the, get a little silly with ours. Like, you know, or that was a different... Not too serious. No, the, the, the Flesh Roomba one, we took the, uh, the latest intro to D&D campaign... And we did it and just spun off into something else. That's You're right. Good. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, That's I did something else. <laughs> My bad. Now, uh, speaking, you said that you're doing a gothic campaign. And yeah. that's the closest I could get to this segue. Ned, this is your segment now, buddy. Oh, yeah. So you've been going live a lot, uh, doing a lot of collages, but you also did a fantastic health goth fashion show that I really oh, enjoyed yeah. watching. Um, health goth is a new... Do you call that a genre? What do you, what do you, or a style? Like, what do you, what? Yeah, I call it an aesthetic. Aesthetic, yeah. A, a Can you explain health goth? Toys, you know, mantra, whatever, what, <laughs> what have you. <laughs> so it's not a subculture? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I would say it is. It's not something you could quite reach out and touch or describe. I know, it's, but it's, you know, it's there. <laughs> now, what, what, what is health goth? How would you define it? Well, I don't okay so it's like you're a little bit like moody but you want to go to the gym and like work out and wear like athletic wear <laughs> and you know it's like a lot of zippers and mesh and just <laughs> but like uh, athletic also like cyberpunk thrown in there just like a little bit <laughs> yeah and then okay so another thing I've done so it's always a lot of sportswear is there yeah. like a brand that health goth subscribes to i see a lot of adidas but i've seen some nike swoosh uh health goths and that seems like false health goth to me that seems like poser shit yeah <laughs> yeah i think adidas is pretty big yeah okay but there's um, no there's no like official brand of health goth no but there's a market that i should 
get into. <laughs> uh, there's no uh, Patagothia. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, did, I did find an article on Health Goth, um, which A, listed Danzig as a Health Goth. <laughs> I laughed very loudly. Uh. Uh, then, wait, there's like commandments of Health Goth in here. Yeah, and it was like commandment one: North Face is not health goth. North Face yeah. is for yuppies. No. <laughs> we we got a uh, a comment from DIY Animation. It's doing Pilates while listening to Skinny Puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, accurate. That's pretty good. Pretty so good. so do you, as far as like, were, were, would you describe? First off, would you describe yourself as health goth? Um, I I would. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that style. I think it's kind of morphed into a character that I do now. <laughs> you know, like, I love playing it up and yeah. just like, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Wait, have you ever, um, uh, 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 like, have you ever been goth in any other way, form or fashion? Like, I don't know how you were in high school. Were you were you yeah. riding the goth way? Were you emo? Were you scenester? No, what, what's your I, was, click, bro? I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't any of those things. So I think this is me like getting into that spirit. I was like, I missed out on all those years, so I'm gonna be like super health goth now and just like <laughs> do all that stuff. Okay. Well, we thought we'd play a game to see how well you do know all goths, uh, in a little game we're calling. Wait, I'm gonna share the screen with you so you can see this game. Okay. In a little game we're calling. Doth you know goth? Oh my God. <laughs> I came up with this while I was, uh, I came up with the name while I was working out. So, you know, yeah. it's health something. It's, <laughs> I'm so goth I died and didn't notice. That was, where did you find all these gifts? I these searched goth gifts. Goth on Google. <laughs> I really like the spider. I didn't know the spider had a little jester hat on it at the end of its animation. I don't know why. <laughs> Spider. It's at the top left. It. Oh, That's, I see oh. it. Ah, uh, like. That's my yeah. Thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Put a I little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the way this game's gonna be played is I'm gonna show you a different picture of a different um, goth, and you'll tell us what kind of goth that is. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we'll start easy. I'm gonna show you this first goth picture. Yes. Uh, so goth one right here on the screen. So what kind of goth is this? Oh gosh. Um, I oh, would goth. say <laughs> punk goth. <laughs> punk goth. I'll take punk goth. So this is yeah. this falls under trad goth, which is traditional goth. Uh, this is just your standard everyday goth. This is what they put on the paper, the form before you sign up. That's what yeah. you start out with. This is your basic character like build, it. even rolls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, goth number two. Okay. Oh, I know this one. This is like raver goth. You, very, video? Oh, so close. Wait, raver goth? But you, you mentioned it a little bit in health goth. They have some crossover. Uh, you used a very specific um, word. Yeah, d hence uh, the oxygen masks. <laughs> Oh, pandemic goth. No. Oh, cyber goth. Cyber goth. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. I, I had some cyber goth friends in high school who had the uh, the full dread system. Pretty much everything but the mask uh, in class. Where are they now? Huh, hanging out. Are they into Powerpuff Girls <laughs> Dude, like these nerds? They're in the computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. Goth girl. coming in at goth number three. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I got uh, this one wrong. Which I think you got it right. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm going to I'm going to say this is like Milady Goth. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Much better answer than what I gave. Way better answer. Uh this is listed under Tribal Goth. Yeah, I said Renfair Goth. <laughs> I wait, let me pull up the Tribal Goth. Uh so, so I'm on. I'm on. Uh, oh, don't even called it Marty Goth. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. All anyway, right, let me pull up the the uh, Tribal Goth article. So, <laughs> it's mainly if you love belly dancing, oh, oh, oh. you love tribal wear like bone. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then the last thing says you like to live and be wild. I like you love Egyptian and Arabian themed things. <laughs> Okay, this is, uh, Connor said Renfest goth, which I thought was pretty good. 
Yeah. Milady Goth is. Milady Goth, I think yeah. is. <laughs> I mean, that's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> Milady Goth sounds like a character. Like, yeah. hello, Milady Goth. I'd watch Milady Goth before My Lady Friday any day. <laughs> that sounds like a way better movie. What's this? Oh, my goodness. Um, I would say, oh, um, maybe like Ether ethereal goth <laughs> you're giving it a lot of credit it's just fairy goth yeah <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> all right oh don't even guess fairy goth uh and then i didn't laugh at milady goth protest too much <laughs> <laughs> that's really good Valdivia. good good one <laughs> this is for goths who have loves of staffs wands romance and nature fairy goth. fairy goth all right this one i would argue is not goth at all uh, but what do you think this one is? Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm with Ned. I don't know if this is goth This is not. false goth. Yeah, rockabilly, but that's not goth. But, but okay, exactly <laughs> what you said, but goth. Gothabilly. Rock it's gothabilly. <laughs> now, I want to ask, uh, for you, Stacey, Ned, and anyone at home, take a good look at this gothabilly person. Um do y'all think that this is rockabilly? Because I feel there is a certain uh, darkness, so to speak, and the makeup and eyes that make me see like, okay, I can see this being goth, but everything else just screams rockabilly. I don't know. Am I thinking about this game way too much? <laughs> no, I, I see it. It's it's there. There's like a hint of gothness, but Man. it's mostly rockabilly. Wait, one could argue it's uh, it's gone from rockabilly to psychobilly which is my favorite uh, term that I still don't quite understand <laughs> wow okay Valdivia hit it on the nail on the head I think it's because she shaved her eyebrows that might make it goth <laughs> Oh. <laughs> we got Matt. Wow, this is actually uh, the chat is blowing up at this. <laughs> um, we got it's kind of day of the dead ish. It's like half and half. It's ish. It's golf as in G A W T H. <laughs> Maybe more generic Instagram shit than anything else. <laughs> oh, and then someone's saying that's pretty goth. <laughs> All right. I'll call it goth. We'll, we'll call it goth. We'll call it goth. All right. It's, uh, unlike, it's goth because of the eyebrows. Unlike these next goths. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. What? Uh. <laughs> okay, y'all. I mean, I'm not like an expert on all these goths. <laughs> no kidding. Your score is not great on this game. <laughs> I never said that I was like the goth compendium. No, you didn't. <laughs> we, just, we just made a goth game and we're leaning into it. <laughs> okay. You've seen the show. You know how we treat our guests. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that, oh my gosh, maybe this is like waitress goth or like <laughs> you know uh, what you or... and the chat are getting very close <laughs> what, is that? what, do we got? what are they saying we, we got uh, business casual goth is actually pretty okay. close yeah uh, I was going to say that too yeah business I mean it does look like business casual. this uh, move over corpse paint because this is corp goth uh, this okay. is corporate goth <laughs> is what it's referred to I thought that was hot topic <laughs> Let's uh let me read the corporate guy. Uh, members of an investment group trying to buy numbers? <laughs> That's uh, a Houston joke. I think corporate golf could work for you. You want to work in an office of some kind? You like formal work way where you want to keep your gothy ways. So this is this is like retired goth but not letting go. Yeah. It's a good look. Yeah, older kink couples at numbers. What formal work wave? <laughs> Man, uh, yeah, I think it's love to chat today. Post, post toil core. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> y'all are killing it. All right, the trickiest form of goth. Not a shred of black clothing in this entire picture. Yet it's Oops. still goth. No traitor! You must wear black. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Lowly goth. Uh, no, that's actually J Goth. That's in a different section. <laughs> oh. Okay. You know what? Um, this looks like Avril Lavigne, so I'm gonna say <laughs> Skater Boy Goth. <laughs> what do we got? It is. This is referred to as Bubble Goth, 
But I think, uh, who, who said it in the chat? Somebody said, uh, Godivia. Pastel Goth. This is Pastel Goth for sure. <laughs> pastel Goth. Which I think Pastel Goth, uh, I, it, I think it's the same as Health Goth, where there's not like music tied to it. It's It's more aesthetic than it is like, I don't know. Not saying that any of these other goths have like, music tied to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. good. I, I feel like, like pastel goths is like mindless self indulgence. I feel like <laughs> I feel like pastel goths and cyber goths have the most music crossover, <laughs> and uh, tribal goths are then to like Gogol Bordello. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's or not, Milady goth. You need to find your 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 gothic Gogol Bordello, like your uh, troll. Oh, the Decemberist. Troll Hammer or whatever they're called. Oh, Troll Hammer. Okay. Yeah. So you're, oh, you're, oh, okay. Owl City. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, wait, that's Pastel Goth? <laughs> someone... would... That's, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> someone, someone said Gotham City. <laughs> that's pretty good. All right. Dang. Well, well it depends. It it seems you doth not know yon goth. <laughs> doth no doth thou know yon gothings. No, this isn't valid. I don't. I don't. <laughs> don't worry. You're not. We're not taking your goth hey. card or anyone's goth card. And nor do we have that authority. As I yeah. didn't know any of these when I click the links. And look, in the email I sent you with the questions, I pro I did not make any guarantees that there would be no gothia questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are uh, near the end of the show. We're going to get into our last segment here. Hang tight. We're going to okay. sing a little yeah, song. Yeah, let me get the, uh, the share screen off. Okay. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, gosh, we're so close. I'm going to not fade it the beginning. I want a new plug. Tell us what's going on. Tell us all the stuff you're doing after we sing this song. Yeah. All right, Stacey, what do you have to plug? Oh, hang on. Wait. <laughs> Sorry, oh, this no. mixer's got a mind of its own. All right, what would you like to plug? <laughs> okay. Um, well, we have our Zine Fest Houston 2020 compilation virtual release on Friday, October 9th from 7 to 9 p.m. And we have a Twitch channel now, so you can tune in there. Oh, what's and, that? Yeah, what's that ch Twitch channel? Oh, um, it's just uh, Twitch slash Zinefest Houston or whatever it is. Oh, twitch.tv slash Zinefest Houston. Right, right under there. All right. I went ahead and plug that in the chat. So y'all yeah. go ahead and check that out. Make sure uh, that you click that link and follow. Smash that MF follow button. All right. And what about your ground. personal social medias? Oh, my. Uh, so you can check out my art at uh, K.Lodges. I don't know. It's like, it's like, it's essentially just like collages. It's K.L.L.A.G.E.S., right? Okay. Yes. Sweet. I'm putting that yeah. up there, too. It's that's so convenient Instagram. that it rhymes with my last name. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, when is ZineFest proper? Have y'all announced the date? Yes, yeah, so um, it'll be on Saturday, November 7th, and it'll be 12 to 6 p.m., the normal hours, and then um, we'll have the after party after that. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Oh, I'm so stoked. All right. Is there <laughs> anything else you'd like to plug? Um, no, I mean, just, you know, try to get out there and uh, be do as much activism as you can and are able to because I think it's very important work. And, you know, no matter what you do, like donate, um, just go out and protest and, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> right on. Awesome. Love to hear it. Connor, anything to plug for you? Uh, cryptocurrency on the platforms. Uh, Zine Fest, November 7th. Grown Up Storytime is going to be on the third Tuesday of the month. And Ned and I are hosting. Make sure you tune in. It's going to be super fun. And then... Um, we're going to be doing another calling quest this month because we had an idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, I haven't even, I have an, a, another idea I need to tell you about. Oh, okay. Oh, it's so fun. Oh, okay. I can't wait to tell you. All right. Tell me after the show. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're going to do a calling quest near the end of the month here. I'm not going to be here for the last week. 
Um, so Ned's going to have like his own solo. Yeah, night. and I've got something really bad planned, and uh, I need all of you to participate and lean into it, and it's going to be a technical wonder kind. <laughs> Should be fun. Um, that's all I got to promote. Uh, at Ned of the Dead on everything. Follow me. Uh, hit me up. Uh, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, Stacey, any parting words for everyone? I miss you all, and I hope we can have a convention party soon. Yes, uh, please. Yes. <laughs> that will be fun. All right, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in. Stacy. thank you so much for being on the show. We'll see you soon. We'll see you all soon. We love you all. Good night. Bye.